joining Yahoo Finance now is is Ice Cube. Uh, Cube, good to finally talk with you here. So you just launched the fourth season of your basketball league. Tell us a little bit about it. It's called the Big Three, and we've taken, um, I guess, what would be called your traditional three-on-three basketball, and we just, you know, um, took it to hyperspace because. You know, the big three is professional, uh, three on three. And uh, we've, you know, our rosters are filled with a lot of uh, former NBA players. Our, our coaches are, are a lot of ha- Hall of Famers from the NBA, you know, like Dr. J and George Gervey. So, you know, we have a league that's, um, one of its one of, one of a kind, you know, is is really an amazing league where you can see professional three on three. It, it really it is innovative stuff. I mean, you're saying you can you can you allow you can challenge fouls. There are one on one matchups. Why is it this stuff in the NBA? It's time. I think you know the NBA is a different flow. Um, you know, with our game, uh, I think it's built for, you know, a one-on-one matchup that's more like a penalty shot uh, or, you know, set up like a penalty kick in, 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 in soccer. But, you know, it's called bring the fire. And each half, the coach can challenge one foul by having the guys go one-on-one for the call. If he make it, the call is good. The foul is good. If he misses then the file comes off the board and, and they uh, take it out and, and, and start over again, play regular games. So it's, it's a great innovation to our league. And um, I think people are going to gonna love that aspect of uh, big three um, games. And, and look, I can't wait to see it myself. So I'm excited. You're, you're a busy guy, still making music, still making movies. What made you launch your own basketball league as a fan um watching somebody like kobe bryant uh score 60 points in his last game and and know that there was not a place i could go see him pay to see him play again um i felt like hey why can't i see these guys play i know they play somewhere and uh, i had always thought about three on three and why it hasn't been elevated to the professional level. So these, these ideas kind of collided at the same time. Um, I have a crazy uh, partner by the name of Jeff Quantnitz and he, uh, me and him brainstormed for a year on what the big three could be. And then we launched in 2017 and never looked back. How has it been trying to relaunch the league coming out the other side of the pandemic. Have you kept all your sponsors? Well, it wasn't easy. Uh, We kept a lot of our sponsors, a lot of people that supported, but a lot of sponsors, they were going through their own trouble uh, and their own issues. Uh, So um, we we weren't able to to keep Adidas, but it had nothing to do with with our league. It had something to do with, uh, you know, their um, financial situation during the pandemic. So um, it wasn't easy to stay alive, but, you know, we did the things and took the steps we needed. We, we postponed our 2020 season, um, which was hard to do, but, but the most responsible thing to do because we have to make our decisions in, in, in March, mm-hmm. in April. And um, March, April 2020, nobody knew what the summer was going to hold, you know, with Would the country be locked down for two years, three years? We didn't know. So uh, that was hard. uh, But what's great is it's 2021. Um, California just opened up on my birthday, which was yesterday. Happy belated birthday. Thank you. Uh, So it's great. You know, we start our season July 10th in Las Vegas, uh, full capacity uh, at the Orleans Hotel arena i mean orleans arena so it's, it's just a great time to get back into it what have you learned as a business person 
throughout the, let's say, 18 months of the pandemic? That you can never really um, stop, you know, figuring out ways to survive in business. Um, even when you think things are kind of on autopilot, um, you can never let your guards down on um, figuring out ways to, you know, cut costs, to be leaner, to be meaner, uh, to not get too, um, I guess, you know, to not stretch yourself too thin, um, you know, and just make sure that you're ready for that rainy day because it's coming. So um, I knew that as a businessman just growing up, but but um, seeing it in effect at this point um, just made me, you know, remember what I already know. You know. I do want to switch gears a little bit around, you know, I was thinking back coming into this interview around this time last year, I had talked with LL Cool J uh, around the, the murder of George, George Floyd, and it was, his comments were very powerful. And then a week and a half later, you came out, I think it was July 1st, with the contract with Black America. You're coming up on that one year anniversary of that. Have you been pleased with the progress, you know, in society uh, off of those things that you outlined in that? Well, you know, what I'm pleased is, is that the reception of the contract with Black America was, um, you know, welcoming. Um, I think I educated a lot of people on just the broad issues and, and where they, you know, I guess where the, the you know, the restraints on, on, on our community's progress, where they, where they really lay and where they are, you know, being held. So that feels good, you know. Of course, I want things to move faster, but I feel, you know, we are engaging with a few companies behind the scenes to try to make things better. Um, and, you know, that's all you can really hope for is to educate people, inspire people, and then look for the people that, that are willing to make things better and engage with them and try to figure it out, you know? So uh, I'm very happy with the progress and um, looking forward to celebrating the year of uh, the contract with Black Cube, have you been able to meet with President Biden? Again, I encourage everyone watching this to go check this out on the site. I mean, this is very, this is powerful. This is something very powerful that you outline bullet by bullet. It is very extensive. It is very, very well thought out. Have you been able to talk to someone in, in the administration about making some of these, these things happen? I haven't met with, uh, with President Biden, but I have been talking to um, um, Congressman Richmond, Cedric, um, and, you know, of course, I want things to move a lot faster, but, you know, I understand, you know, um, and hopefully we can set up some meetings that I ask for uh, in the future with, with not just the administration, but with their connection to big business, because I think this is a, this is a private and a public sector issue. So, you know, if they can help me in the private sector in a lot of ways to get to the decision makers, to change some policies and uh, try to funnel money where it's supposed to go, um, you know, I'm waiting to be able to do that. And we have been engaging and, you know, I'm just patiently waiting to take the next step. You know, one thing you did mention, and I guess this ties back to our world of finance here, Yahoo Finance, you mentioned SPACs in, in the CWBA. Uh, listen, we have covered a lot of SPACs here. We've talked to a lot of executives. I see next to no Black representation on boards and definitely not in leadership leadership positions. Why does this continue? Oh, uh, you know, um, tradition, you know, people, I, I guess they are comfortable with working with people they see every day and, and went to school with and things like that. So it's just really opening people's minds to, to, to be more inclusive. Um, things would, would be better if they were more inclusive. And until people realize that and come to that conclusion, you'll continue to have uh, 
no representation or little representation in these areas. Uh, but it's not really about just the face you put in, in place, but it's about or the color of the skin of the person you put in place. It's about what you do for the broader community and what can be done for the less fortunate. Because somebody get a job like that or a position in a pretty fortunate position. So we want to think about what we could do for the less fortunate. Almost coming up on, on the one year of the CWBA, do you see healing in society compared to where we were last year? I, I see you know, progress here and there, um, but I also see us taking steps back. You know, it's, it's that old scenario, you know, one step forward, two steps back sometimes. So it's an ebb and flow in this country of, of um, things that if, if they weren't here, it'd be a better place. So, you know, I just think the good people just got to continue to fight the good fight um, and uh, point out what's wrong and try to fix it. Well, I know a lot of folks certainly appreciate your thoughts and, and your views on this and what you have done to stand up and make a difference. So we appreciate that. And good luck with the, the new league. I know a lot of folks are going to be watching. Much success with that. Ice Cube, we look forward to staying in touch. Appreciate it, man. Thanks for the interview.